Hey everyone, welcome to the Shimoda Split Screen. This is a show where we talk with other photographers about news, info relevant to their lives. Today we're talking with North Carolina-based landscape photographer, Mark Denny. Uh, before we start, Mark, what's your YouTube and Instagram channel so people can follow you? So on YouTube, it's uh, Mark Denny, and on Instagram, it's Mark Denny Photo. So the, today, the reason I want to talk to you is because you recently made the jump from... Uh, I guess a career man slash part-time photographer, and you've jumped into a full-time photographer. Uh, I think that's something a lot of people either are kind of hoping to do themselves. Um, what made you make that move? You know, it's like I talked to a lot of people about that ever since I made the switch, and it seems like everybody is kind of in the same boat. A lot of people are working the, the nine to five corporate type jobs and on the, all their free time, they're out shooting as much as possible. But, uh, you know, I, I always hear that people would love to leave the nine to five and make a full time career out of photography. But as we know, it's, it's difficult to do. Right. But uh, it's something that I've been slowly transitioning out of the corporate world. Mm -hmm. But then uh, the, the company that I was with was going to be doing some, you know, major restructuring, and it just seemed like a good opportunity for me to to go ahead and and and, and exit that world. But right. um, yeah, it's 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 been an interesting journey. I'm about about three months in right now yeah. from from going full time from leaving the corporate world. But uh, it's been exciting so far. It's not what I anticipated, you know, because you you think that. Well, now I'm a full-time photographer. I'll have all the time in the world to go out and, and shoot everything and travel. And uh, I feel like I actually shot more when I worked 40, 50 hours a week in a corporate job than I do right now because I'm just kind of inundated with all the, the business side of everything. So, right. um, But I, I think that that'll always be there. But right now, there's just a whole lot of it that I'm kind of going through. Do you feel the... Do you feel a little bit of pressure to produce on the, the photography side now? Yeah, yeah, I do. I, I feel, I actually feel more pressure to, tr how to, to, to try and figure out how to monetize everything. That's kind of what I keep thinking about is because um, there's so many different income streams. And that's something that I've really figured out over the last few months is that there, there's not one income stream that photographers get all their income from. It's just, it's various different models where in the corporate world or your nine to five job, you got all your income from one source. So I almost feel like I have like, I went from one job to eight, nine, 10 different jobs. Right. So it's uh, a lot of different things to manage, but yeah, there, there's a little bit of pressure to produce. Was your old job related at all to, to photography? No, right. no, not at all. It was uh, financial marketing consulting. Do you think, uh, you're going to be the type of photographer that leaves town all the time, uh, to go capture images or are you going to be shooting mostly within your part of the U S I would like to do kind of 50, 50, uh, where I'm at in North Carolina, I'm, I'm centrally located. So I'm about maybe two hours from the mountains and two hours from the ocean. So it kind of, have, it's nice to have both uh, access to both you know, types of geography, but, uh, I would like to continue to do a lot of shooting in North Carolina, but also kind of venture out as much as possible too. Right. Like when you say venture out, do you mean globally? Probably mostly within the U.S. right now, yeah. but uh, I definitely wouldn't have any reservations for uh, jumping across the pond. <laughs> yeah, of course. So you mentioned uh, monetizing uh, every, basically every uh, everything you can, kind of thing. What what are some of those things that you're you're monetizing? So things like you know, like YouTube ad, ad revenue, Amazon affiliate income, trying to monetize print sales and in workshops and. Uh, trying to think what else just uh a lot of those kind of things that when i was working a nine to five job i didn't really think of much about it's like i would i was right. making i was producing youtube videos almost on a weekly basis and i never really paid much attention to the ad revenue or anything because it, it wasn't a ton of money and um i just didn't uh money was uh wasn't really a concern then and it's not really so much of a concern right now eventually so, you know, you, you have to start producing. So just trying to, to figure out how to monetize everything. Yeah, I wonder if that will change your approach. Well, obviously it will change your approach. But just um, for myself, sometimes I'll take images when I when I know I need to get an image of something. And it'll, it'll influence what is a good image and what 
I should just delete or just put in a folder somewhere and I'll, I'll spend too much time editing something or whatever just to make it a, an image that I can use later. Um, right. I don't know. Can you see that happening with, with, with your approach to now an ID to make money off this? No. Yeah, and I, I, my, my mindset's already kind of shifted a little bit when it comes to images that I believe would be good for print, for print sales, because right. there's, you know, there's very specific images that a person would feel comfortable hanging in their home. And I'm already thinking that way, like what, what type of an image are people more apt to hang in their home versus others? And I'm already feel kind of more, uh, more what's the word not not pressured but more kind of steered towards trying to capture those types sure. of images more often now yeah and what uh what kind of characteristics in the image would uh what do you think change that like i think very simple photos are usually you know good sellers that's what i've noticed in the past photos that have a, a very very clear focal point have a very simple composition and a lot of times muted colors or black and white work really well. I don't, I think I've only sold a handful of images that have very vibrant color palettes. It's usually muted or black and white. Yeah. I was just, just when you said that, uh, or just when I asked that, I, I, I immediately thought of even for us choosing color schemes, the, the tilt from the, the safe, uh, the color that goes with everything to, to something with, with a little life in it, there it's pretty skewed. And I think that's yeah. probably, it's probably the same thing. So with print sales, because I hear from some photographers, uh, I'm just thinking of one in particular, but last time I talked to him, he was just saying that it was a real struggle to make his living off print where he, before in the last five years, that was the, the, the base of his income. I guess it's still a relevant um, way to generate money off your photography. Yeah, I, I think it is. It's definitely not uh, one of the larger income streams. I mean, print, print sales is, is difficult. It really is. Right. And I, I've never heard anything different from anybody. Everybody, every photographer that I know always starts the conversation the same way, talking about how difficult it really is. Yeah. And I'm not 100% sure exactly what it is. I don't know if it's that consumers are less apt to spend more on a photographer's artwork, or is it because there's so, such easy access to less expensive artwork out there? And I'm thinking of things like, I mean, you could go anywhere to like, uh, I don't know, like Targets or those kind of right. stores. And if you look at those types of artwork, that's what people are buying. The, 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 the black and white New York City photo with the yellow cab running through right. that you've seen everywhere. Yeah, that's well, the kind of stuff that people love to buy and it's I mean, cheap. Yeah, just think of like a shop like Ikea how many IKEA yes, photos? That's what I was see. thinking of. Yeah, around. It's it's a shame that people don't have a little more. They don't want a little more out of it. But I also right. I think the problem is too that there's just so many amazing images now, and they're just so accessible mm -hmm. that it's not as uh, it's not as rare an experience to have a beautiful image in your in your house because you can just turn on your phone and there's ten thousand beautiful images you know everyone it, can seemingly take an amazing image now right exactly they're just easy access to it but what i what i have found is that people who have a vested interest in you or or me those are the ones that yeah. really want to have a piece of your artwork and they'll pay whatever not astronomical prices but they'll definitely pay a little bit of a premium to have your artwork for sure which is great yeah which is good and yeah I mean, of course, you want the a general market as well, but it's just really nice to have people that appreciate exactly what you do. It's a, right, exactly. It's a nice, it's a nice feeling. Um, yeah, it definitely is. So with with YouTube, it's kind of funny because when I watched the video where you discussed making the transition to to full time pro, I just I didn't I never thought about it before. I just assumed you already were. Uh, a full-time professional photographer. Um, when did you start doing your YouTube videos? About, I think it was January of 2017. So almost two years now I've been doing YouTube. Uh, how, how is that? How did that experience start? What, like, what drove you to start making videos? I, 
It's a good question. So I, I started a, a Facebook photography page, I think in 2016. My family was telling me that I should put some artwork out there. So I started to do it and um, I got like five or 6,000 followers in the very first year. And that absolutely blew me away wow. because I didn't advertise it. It just, it just happened. And most of them were in North Carolina, but it was December of 2017. It was around Christmas time and, uh, or 2016. And I created a, a real quick two minute video right here at my desk on my phone. Right. And it was just kind of like a thank you. It really means a lot, kind of a video. And I, I posted it on Facebook. And I, I think it got like seven or 8,000 views, which isn't a whole lot in the grand scheme of things, but that totally blew me away. And then I posted that same video on YouTube the, the uh, January of 2017. And then I just, I was like, you know what? I'm going to make another video. And then another video. And then I started to really get into the video side of it started to get some studio lights and it just kind of a snowball effect. Once you see the the, the traction start to gain, right. it's, it's kind of addicting, but uh, I love doing it now. Well, yeah, I should just say that you're the, the, when you first did the bag review for us, um, it was a surprise to me, but I was just really impressed by just the whole setup that you had, like the way you had everything lit, the quality of it and just the, the detail, everything. Um, I probably, that's probably why I just assumed you were, full-time professional because your image already looked like a professional, I guess. Right. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I try and to try and perfect all those little tiny details and I'm right. constantly finding little ways to tweak it and try and make it better and better. Is that something you, you, you obviously just said you did, but you spent a lot of time on moving lights, having backlights, et cetera, all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Rim light, main lights, hair <laughs> lights. I mean, all that stuff. And I watch YouTube constantly. Right. I, I have to like just make myself stop yeah. just trying to learn more and more. And, and lately I've really been focused on lighting and right. lighting can drive you absolutely crazy. Just moving stuff around in different lights. But yeah. it's, it's, it's very, very critical to a, a good polished look in my opinion. Yeah. I have, uh, little pieces of tape where all my light stands go on the floor just so that I have the, I have the same thing <laughs> yeah. my daughter came in here the other day she's like dad why is there tape all over the floor I'm like it's got a purpose please don't pull it up <laughs> yeah yeah exactly well it's interesting because um I mean kind of back to you making the transition I feel like there is so many people that that want to do that they want to know how they can do that and there's so much information online how to do that. Like you said, you watch all these videos. We probably watch the same videos. Um, it's just, and, and again, with social media, Instagram, these types of things, it's just so available. Um, people's lifestyles, what they do, how to do it versus 10 years ago, you know, um, it wasn't available. And it feels like it's so much easier now to, to make that jump into uh, yeah. like a full time or at least the attempt to do it. Kind of right. And, uh, but my favorite part of YouTube is, you know, when you post something on Facebook or Instagram, it's got a lifespan of a few hours or maybe a couple of days and it's never seen of again. But with YouTube, yeah. I mean, it lives forever Yeah. because yeah. The, the, the search engine aspect of it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I agree. So I think that's really cool. I Very think, cool. I think it's uh, probably for you. It's and it is for me. I, I, I like to think it is, but I think it's a critical uh part of a business moving forward is that there is that presence just because it is the second biggest search engine. And I would, I would say for our media industries, it probably rivals Google for information. Yeah, I, I definitely agree for sure. So yeah. like, what, what kind of challenges do you think are going to come up in the next year for you? I mean, I, I think that just trying to, really trying to get out of the, out of the mindset of, of making, how should I say it? Trying to, to replace the amount of income that I made before right. with photography. And it's, I'm trying to get away from that mindset because at the end of the day, you are kind of like living a little bit more minim, minimalistic is really kind of a, a good way to put it. Yeah. And just trying try to focus on that a little bit more. And, you know, I got everything budgeted out, how much I need to make um, every single month. And, and hopefully, ideally, it, it ramps up over time. Right. But I think that's going to be a struggle. And I know that 
you know, when, when you have the nine to five corporate job, you have very, very steady income that you can always count on. Mm -hmm. And photography will probably never be quite like that. It's going to be all over the place. And that's probably going to be the hardest part for me. Yeah. Cause I was in corporate America for, for 17 years at the same job. So I got really, really used to it. Feels good to uh, be out of corporate America. Yeah, it, it does. You know, I, I worked for an amazing company and met them. It was, you know, some of the most amazing people in my entire life there. And I'm still connected with them, but it feels really good to, to really sink my teeth into something that I'm passionate about. Right. Because I wasn't too excited about financial marketing. As much as I tried to do it and it paid the bills and it was fantastic, I'd still, right. I didn't wake up in the morning with that you know, that, that real desire to do anything. And now I, I do, you know, I wake up like an hour before my alarm even goes off and my mind is just going in a million directions about things that I'm really excited about. Right. And for me, that's, that's everything right there. And I think that when you're doing something you love to do, there's a price tag associated with that. You might not be making as much money as you normally would or what sure. you might be accustomed to, but you're doing something you love. So you get, you got to yeah. value that. There's a lot to be said for, um, I don't want to use the word freedom because that's kind of a, a big word, but uh, having the flexibility in your life to, to pursue the things you want to pursue. It's uh, For me, at least, it's it, there's sacrifices that I have to make, just mostly because I live in Japan. It, it, that creates a lot of difficulty for me. Um, if I didn't work in this industry, it'd be really difficult me, difficult for me to live here. Um, just because I, I don't really have much interest in jumping into the Japanese corporate life or, or anything like that. Right. So I have, my job allows a bit of freedom as well that, uh, that I'm grateful for. Yes. Yeah. That's a, that's a big part too. Yeah. Absolutely. So what do you see, uh, what, what's next for you in the, in the immediate future? Any plans coming up? So I'm, uh, I probably for the, I'm really trying to position myself for uh, the, the beginning of next year to, and really just trying to, to grow print sales. I started doing more and more kind of um, Skype post-processing sessions with Photoshop okay. and Lightroom. And I really did those kind of one-off and I've started to do a little bit more of them and I, and I enjoy doing it, mainly just to get to connect with a lot of cool people. And uh, I'm going to try and really kind of get that going a little bit more. Is that a consulting type thing you mean? Like you're doing uh, somewhat pays for an hour of your time and so yeah so yeah so somebody will pay for either like a one hour or two hour session and i try and custom really tailor it to whatever their okay. needs are so i connect with them on the phone before the session kind of talk about you know what are they looking to do photoshop lightroom what do they want to get better at yeah. and then i kind of create a little tutorial for them and then we go over it edit some of their photos a lot of times they want to see me edit one of my photos that they've seen on my website and just go through that. And what's really cool is a lot of times, almost actually almost every time I've done one session with somebody, I immediately do another session with them, like within the next month. Right. So I know that they're enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. I'm getting to connect with them. And I stay in touch with them all via email and social media. They capture a great image and they edit it and send it over to me just to show yeah. it to me. And I think that's really cool. So that I really great. want to explore that. Yeah, that, that's interesting because, um, yeah. I think you have a, a great personality for exactly what you just said where, um, and you hinted at it before, but you know, when, when people gravitate towards you as a person and the work you do, it's, it's inevitably going to grow your business. And we live in such a world where everything is, um, you know, like even YouTube videos are just produced to meet certain targets. So they generate certain ad revenue and, and this type of thing that, and the rest of the world too. But when you have a good person behind the, the product, it's, um, keeps people coming back. Yeah, it's, absolutely. It's, a, it's yeah. a nice, it's a nice thing. So it, where you live, are you, uh, what, what's the landscape like where you live? It's, um, it's, it's really just kind of hilly, a lot of trees, right. nothing super exciting, right? Immediately where I live. But two hours west is the uh, the Smoky Mountains and the Blue Ridge Mountains, which are just absolutely beautiful, especially this time of year. And then two hours east is um, the Outer Banks of North Carolina, which is a very nice, very natural beach. 
which yeah. on the east coast of uh, the U.S., don't get a whole lot of really untouched natural beaches. It's, it's so built up now. Right. So it's one of my favorite aspects what, of what, the North Carolina coast. Where is there a name for that area? It's the, the Outer Banks. Oh, it's called the Outer Banks? Okay. Yeah, it's called the Outer Banks. It's on, it's on the, the north shore of North Carolina up towards Virginia. I don't know. You have anything else you want to add? Anything else that should be? I, I think that just one of the things that I have found so exciting since I did leave corporate America is listening to, you know, people that people have been absolutely amazing just with, you know, congratulatory um, remarks and comments, but just to hear them talk about how they would love to do that one day. And I would never really thought a whole lot about it. I just thought, I mean, I knew there was other people outside of me that wanted that, right? but the amount of people has absolutely floored me. How really? many people say the same exact thing? Yeah. Well, that, that's that's really good you bring that up because that's um, that's exactly why I wanted to talk to you because I feel like there's so many people who want to do that. And I feel like people – I was thinking about the other day that there's it's, – it's basically like there's all these carrots just dangling and people are just like, oh, I wish I could just grab that and and, and get get out of this job and, and do that. And, right. Uh, you know, you see that type of uh, – or I don't know if it's genuine or not, but you see that on Instagram a lot where people literally just quit their job or their story would say that they've left their job and just gone for a life of travel. I never right. know how genuine those accounts are, but it's, um, yeah, it's tempting. It's very tempting. For a lot it's very of tempting. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I, I, and I dig into a lot of those stories. I'm like, how are they doing it? And yeah. I get the calculator out and I'm crunching the numbers and I'm like, how, how does it work? But so do you think adding the elements of being the global traveler, um, is that something you want to do? And is it something that uh, you see financially possible through your experiences so far? Yeah, I, I would definitely want to do it. I, um, I have two children that are in high school right now. One's going to be one's a junior in high school. So they're going to be going off to, to college and the other one's a freshman. So I wouldn't want to do a ton of traveling right, right. now, you know, in the last couple of years while they're living at home. But long term, I could definitely see myself doing a, a little bit of globe trotting. That would be uh, definitely in the cards. <laughs> yeah, I was just when I, again, I was going to say I was going to ask you if you had kids because uh, that definitely puts a stranglehold on a few things. Yeah, yeah. My wife and I always are always talking about like we only have. X amount of days left with our son before he leaves. And I'm like, I know, I know it, it goes by fast. Is, so, that, um, is that a, uh, yeah, I mean, you'll see it on sitcoms, but that's always the joke is I can't wait till they're out of the house. Is that the, uh, no, my <laughs> wife and I are totally, like, we, we have a couple of friends that, um, were, were like that. They, they couldn't wait to be the empty nesters. And my wife and I are like, Oh my gosh, we only have, you know, 487 days left with our son right. and 727 days with our daughter. <laughs> right. But That's yeah, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely miss them, but, uh, they'll be home all the time. All right. Well, it's been, uh, it's been really nice to talk to you and, uh, get to know yeah. you a little better. Absolutely. I definitely enjoyed it and I appreciate the invite. Ah, you're welcome. Uh, hopefully we can do it again. Maybe, uh, Get an update from you down the line. Yeah, I'd love to. Just let me know. All right. Okay, Mark. Well, this has been uh, Shimoda Split Screen. I want to thank Mark Denny. Once again, what's your YouTube and Instagram channels? Uh, YouTube is under Mark Denny, and uh, Instagram is at Mark Denny Photo. All right. I just want to thank everyone for watching, and we'll see you all next time.